Well, do you want to know all about Pungo, the country section of Virginia Beach? There's a whole big section, the southeastern corner. So we're going to talk about all things Pungo today, the countryside of Virginia Beach, the pros, the cons, and what it's like to live in Pungo. But stay tuned till the end because I'll talk about the drawbacks that I think are there for living in Pungo too. And we're starting right now. Hey, my name is Sam Sansalone and I'm a real estate agent in Hampton Roads, Virginia. And if it's your first time, I'm so glad you're here. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. I do videos about real estate in Hampton Roads. Uh, I talk about living in Hampton Roads. I do them every week. So if you have any questions about living and moving into this area, let me know. I help people from all over the world move into this area. I'll drop my contact information here and in the description. Now today we're talking about Pungo. Now I've talked a lot about Virginia Beach, but I've gotten a lot of questions about living in the country in Virginia Beach. Like Sam, where are the country areas? Is there, a, is there a country? Yes, there is. So this area of Pungo is the biggest piece of this country section. So we'll talk about the Pungo, uh, the real estate in Pungo, what it's like to live in Pungo and school districts and things to do, all the stuff that's involving this section of Pungo. And of course, at the end, I'm going to talk about the drawbacks too, because there are several drawbacks to living here. Now, first of all, where is Pongo? Well, if you look on the on the map there, you look on the right on the southeastern section, you'll look and see that little peninsula, that little thing that juts down the south and southeast. That whole area just south of Indian River Road is called Pongo. Uh, the north section of this area is more of like, I wouldn't call it the downtown. It's not really downtown. The, the more populated area of Pongo is in this northern part. But if you go down, down further south, you get more into the country, more into the country, all the way down close to North Carolina. And so this area is pretty large. It takes up the largest part of that percentage of uh, Virginia Beach that is country. I've said in other videos that Virginia Beach is about 10% country as far as the land size goes. So and most of this 10% is taken up by Pungo. Now, because you're in the southeastern corner, you do have a long distance to get to different places. Like for instance, you're about 20 minutes or so away from any interstate period. Uh, it takes you about 15 to 20 minutes also to get to the ocean front. It can take you about 35 to 40 minutes to get across to the northwestern side of Norfolk. And especially if you're going to go to the peninsula towards North Newport News and Hampton, that's going to take you even more than that, closer to 45, 50 minutes on the fast side. So let's talk about the history and what has happened here in Pungo since the beginning. Well, this town actually started in the early 1600s and the term Pungo actually originated back in this time. It was an Algonquin Native American language a word from a Native American tribe called Machipungo. Um, that word meant fine dust and flies. So if you can get an idea of what life might have been like here. Now this word Pungo is also spelled P-O-N-G-O. Uh, and there are a couple other uh, areas that have this word in it, including an area called Pungatee. But another thing I want to mention is Grace Sherwood. If you've ever heard of Grace Sherwood, she was the last person that was convicted of, be of being accused of a witch uh, in Virginia. Well, she was called the Witch of Pungo because she had a farm uh, in Pungo in the 1700s. And she was tried actually in Witch Duck on the north northwestern side of Virginia Beach. And that term witch duck, interestingly enough, the witch duck, back then they tried to determine if the person was a witch by, uh, by taking them and dunking, ducking them into water. And if they sunk, they were innocent. And if they rose, they were guilty. Well, that's kind of a tough one to get away from. Well, that word witch duck on the northwestern section of Virginia Beach uh, was derived from that, that exercise, a witch being ducked into the water. There's a statue of Grace Sherwood uh, in that witch duck area next to Bayside Hospital. Now let's talk about the real estate in Pungo. This is also a very different discussion than other parts of Virginia Beach. And we'll talk about the specific houses in a second, but I want to talk about the, the concept of the green line. The city of Virginia Beach installed this, this imaginary line that, that bordered Princess Anne Road and connect, uh, connected all the way down towards uh, Sandbridge Road toward the coast. Well, north of that line is more of the developed uh, Virginia Beach that we all often are familiar with. But just south of that line is the area that they're trying to protect and keep as country as long as possible. So you see lots more country and farmland. So this area will be preserved as, as long as possible uh, to keep that country feel uh, alive. Now just south of that green line, you'll see several uh, subdivisions that aren't technically in Pungo. But if you go just south of that, down south near Indian River Road, just south of that road, that's where Pungo really starts. The corner of Indian River Road and uh, Princess Anne Road is the kind of the, the center of Pungo. And you take that and go south, that's where 
where most of that farmland, lots of the houses are down there and further east from there. You'll see a lot of brick ranch style houses, uh, you know, that 50s and 60s uh, style house. But also you'll see lots of houses older than that. And lots of these houses that were built in the early 1900s that are just, they're still there, they're hanging on. Uh, but then lots of farmland and people have bought and developed a farmland and put like one house on it, uh, you know, one large custom house, for instance. So you see a wide range. Most of the houses in here are priced anywhere from the low 300s up to like the, the $600,000 price range. Uh, but you can get them as low in the small houses, as low as $200,250, but then uh, they, they go up to custom houses, can, can go over a million dollars uh, too. If you want that country access, uh, this section has like the, the best bang for buck, I think, and accessibility to the eastern section of Virginia Beach. We'll talk about the accessibility later in the con section too. But a lot of these lots are like one to five acres, so if you're coming uh, to Virginia Beach in one acreage, this is a place I would suggest starting. They can go anywhere from one acres, five acres. You know, you see some that are 10, 15, 20 acres and more. So you can also get a, a pretty wide uh, spectrum of size of lots as well as size of houses. And something I want to mention about these houses uh, that is very different than the rest of Virginia Beach is that these are all on well and septic uh, systems. So wells, well water instead of city water and uh, septic tanks instead of city uh, sewer. So you're not connected at all to these city public utilities. And so some people love this, some people don't like this. You can see here, see the, the, the line there right at Indian River Road? If you look on the north side of Indian River Road, it's all connected to, to, to city uh, water and sewer. But if you go just south of Indian River Road, it's all well and septic. In addition to that, a lot of these houses have generators. Uh, so sometimes the power goes out, and especially because the, there's a well system there, you need electricity to power the well. So people wanna make sure that they don't lose power and then lose a water source too. Another reason why this matters too is that sometimes it influences the type of loan or if you can get a loan for a house in this area too. So keep that in mind if you're planning to buy a house in Pungo. But in terms of frequency of houses that sell in here, um, you see you know, about once a week, you'll see something in here go on the market and sell. Uh, about 70 uh, in the last year have come on the market and sold. And another drawback is on, in certain sections, you've got flood insurance. So part of Pungo, as I've said before, is along the water. And there are lots of creeks that run into uh, the Pungo area uh, connected off of the main bodies of water. Well, these creeks, um, they go straight up through Pungo, but along the sides of the creeks, they have a tendency to flood because these areas are low lying in a lot of places. So if you're near the creeks, close to the creeks, or close to the eastern side of Pungo, closer to the ocean, you're gonna be experiencing more chances for flood insurance and more flooding in general. I have a friend who lives in Pungo and you know the water has risen up you know, into his yard on a regular basis and he's caught fish in his front yard before. So that's not super surprising if you're in certain sections of Pungo. Now that's not the case everywhere in Pungo especially in the center part of Pungo, that's not really as much of a problem. But I will say that if you're trying to get out of Pungo in certain sides, this still might cause a problem because your access uh, points in and out of Pungo are very, very limited. So you've got specific roads you can get, get in and out of. And because these areas are low lying, a lot of these places, they also sometimes can have real high flood insurance uh, policies. So if you do plan to buy a house, in Pungo, make sure to check your flood zone and also get a quote from an insurance company before you start making an offer on a house to make sure you know what your flood insurance is gonna be and ask your agent for any references too. Now for the school districts in Pungo, there aren't too many. <laughs> The main high school is Kellum High School, and the middle school is Princess Anne Middle. Now there are two elementary schools, Creeds and Princess Anne Elementary. Those two are some of the top ranked by Niche.com in the city of Virginia Beach, as well as the ones in the middle school and, and high school. Those are also pretty high ranked as well, but the two elementary schools are really high ranked. Now things to do in Pungo. Well, even though you're not close to town center or close to downtown Norfolk, you've got the country lifestyle going on. It's the epitome of country living. You've got things like the Strawberry Festival that is an annual well-known festival in Pungo. People all from across Hampton Roads come down for the Strawberry Festival. And also the Military Aviation Museum, which is an old airfield, has lots of old warbirds, lots of old vintage stuff on display. It's right just south of the, the main section of Pungo. And as you drive into the Aviation Museum, just to the left, if you turn off, <laughs> you'll see a big display of dinosaurs in amongst a little, a little grassy area in a pond. 
I don't know really why they had this, but it's really cool. There's like 20 or so dinosaurs sticking out of trees. Just fascinated with the weirdness of this, but I don't understand the, co the correlation between the dinosaurs and the aviation museum. And then you have other stuff down there like Christmas tree farms, uh, pumpkin patches, and other uh, pick your own fruit uh, farms, like strawberries, of course, and produce stands. So like the thing you think about when you're thinking country, these types of things are prevalent in Pungo. In addition to what's in Pungo, just east of that, there's a lot of wildlife refuge areas. Uh, there's False Cape State Park and Back Bay Wildlife Refuge. Those are the two primary ones on the southeastern coast, right down south of Sandbridge, which is one of the most popular uh, and also still secluded beaches in Virginia Beach. Now, just because you're in the country does not mean you don't have access to good restaurants. There is one of my favorites, actually one of my uh, up and coming restaurants that I love that a lot of other friends of mine like is called the Bee and the Biscuit. This is just south of that, that most busy intersection of Pungo. Um, and my wife and I went a couple of months ago, loved it. The problem with this restaurant is not the food, it's you know, amazing food and worth the drive, but the wait time can be really long. It can take you an hour plus to wait for a table. So keep that in mind, especially on the weekends, weekend mornings. A few others, one well-known uh, restaurant locally is Margie and Ray's Seafood, and then a couple others, Pungo Pizza, another well-known uh, pizza place that's pretty good too, and Blue Pete's Seafood. So you've got four there that are pretty good. A new coffee shop also called Sawdust Road that's also in this section of Pungo too. Now let me talk about the cons to living in Pungo. Now, there are some significant cons. First of all, the location. The proximity you are from other places like Town Center in downtown Norfolk, in the north section of Virginia Beach even, you're so far. In addition to that, you've got two lane highways like I mentioned, and on those two lane highways, you got ditches. So you're going anywhere from like 30, 35 miles an hour in some places up way over that too. So you're going pretty fast and there's also lots of corners. So you're taking these corners and you've got the ditches on both sides. So just you have to be very careful, especially in the evening times when it gets darker. Uh, so you're not going too fast around these corners and not too fast down these, these narrow highways. We've got flooding, I mentioned that before, especially on the sides of Pungo. When there's uh, hurricanes with easterly winds coming on shore, the, those winds are blowing some of the water uh, off the coast onto land. And so if you're on the coast or on the sides of Pungo, you're gonna see more water start ponding up and accumulating in your yard. And it gets pretty treacherous in a lot of places. So gotta be real careful and just talk to neighbors, especially to find out exactly how, how impactful the flooding is in the area that you're looking to buy if you're planning to buy a house in Pungo. And so that being said, you got sometimes a, lot, a higher than normal uh, flood policy than other places in the area. Of course, also the drawback could be well and septic. You're not on the city utilities. And that could be a positive for you, but if you don't want to do your own maintenance uh, and, or you don't want to pay the cost of installing new systems, uh, this might not be something for you either. So I've done lots of pros and cons videos and descriptive informative videos about specific areas in Virginia Beach and all the other cities in Hampton Roads. So if you have any questions about moving into the area or this area in general, let me know. And I've got my contact information in the description and right here, or you can click on videos right here to learn more about the city of Virginia Beach. And I will see you on the next video.